In this video, I'm going to demonstrate a method for securing Apex REST services with a basic user authentication. This is not the only way, but the simplest to implement. I'm going to demonstrate how to configure users and groups to apply privileges to those REST services created. We'll set up an example testing method and then also highlight the differences between using Apex REST repository versus an ORDS REST repository, both of which do work with the basic authentication. We'll finish the example with discussion of the Oracle Cloud Services of Schema Service and Exadata Express and how their authentication for BASIC works a little bit differently. For this video, we're not going to cover ORDS managed users or using ORDS OAuth2 authentication. That's for another video. The steps we're going to be following are going to be creating a REST service we can test with, setting up a monitor script so we can see the results of our security changes, creating a user and group, creating a REST privilege, and then securing that REST service with that privilege. Then we'll adjust the settings to see how that security is applied and how it's picked up. Let's get started. We have a workspace called My Workspace. We're going to go to the about here just to show what version we're using. We're currently on my VM here, 18.2, using Orge Listener of 19.1. We'll navigate to our REST service editor interface. And what you'll notice at the top of this one is there is a note regarding Apex REST services and a minimum version of ORDS not being met. What that means is that you can't use the ORDS repository at this time, but you can continue to use the Apex-based repository. Let's set up our REST service. We're going to create a name, module name called REST module one. I know very creative. And we're going to set its name the same as the URI prefix. These can be different, but the URI prefix is what's going to show up in the URL. You'll notice that there's a slash at the end of the URI prefix where it's not in the module name. That's kind of the syntax. For URI template, we're going to set up a template called now. This is the function within this grouping that we're going to call. And we're going to make it a get method. For simplicity's sake, we're going to make it a one row query so we don't have to deal with pagination. And our source is going to be a single select statement of sys timestamps so we can see some change and we're going to label the column as now so that we can pick it up in, during our testing script. Notice there's no semicolon at the end of your select statements depending on your development environment you may be used to putting semicolons in don't do them here. So you'll see after you create your module that you can review the settings and change many of them depending on the level you select the level and then you can actually change values including the SQL query. Once you picked an actual module method you can run a test on it so there should be for most get methods a test post that you can actually pull. You'll see here I get an actual failure that says this is no good because you have an HTTPS. By default, Apex requires HTTPS is in their definition. And because I have my little VM, no certificates, it's not going to work. So you can override this default by simply saying requires secure access to no, applying your change, and then retesting that pull method or just simple URL. Please get me a value. And you'll see here now I have a pass test, which is great. So this is my baseline test module. We'll use it across the board in all of our reviews to make sure that we have a REST module functioning and also that it's secure. Now let's go into our user group administration because we have administrative rights on our workspace that we're currently in. We can go up here into the right and say manage users and groups. We're going to create two things. First, we're going to start with the group name so we can use it when we're assigning the user. Go ahead and create group and after some soul searching i decided on using a name of rest user group one put in a description so you know what the intention of the group is for and at this time we're not going to use group grants we're going to leave that alone there's no need for us to use it at this time so groups within a group is basically what that is we'll create that and now we'll go in and switch back over to users and we will take a look at our user. I'm going to create a user specifically used for my REST service and doesn't need to have any other access. We're going to call that person Joe. We're going to give Joe an email address to complete the registration of name and then go down leave all the basic limited privileges and give Joe a very simple password also. My rules in my workspace are set very low. Some workspaces may have higher password complexities needed. I'm going to assign Joe just the rest user group one privilege, nothing else, and hit create user. Now I have a user that I can use in my commands to test out. If you need to modify, you can click on Joe and actually confirm, yes, member of this group can also remove any memberships as necessary. Now we're going to apply a privilege to our REST services. First, we have to create the privilege. On the right-hand side, you'll find the RESTful service privilege menu item. Go ahead and click there, click create, and we'll create our privilege. Give it a name and a label. They can be the same or they can be different. 
Then we're going to select our group that we created, the user group one, and we're going to put in a description. Then after that, select your module. Use the shuttle to move it over to the right. That's what will protect the module. You can see the registration of the RESTful privilege. Let's go back to our module, go into our module, and verify that it now has registered a required privilege which matches your name that you entered. You can also see the privilege required listed on the summary level of the module list. I'd like to verify that my REST service is working with security, so I'm going to clear out the required privilege here for a minute, leave it open in public, confirm that it's still working. Then I'm going to go over to my Linux prompt here. I'm going to set up and test a curl command. So we'll do a very quick curl of our URL, seeing there's no security on it. This should work just fine. What I want to do is set up a recurring monitor. And we'll use a small script and the watch command to monitor changes in the availability of that curl command. We'll also include a username and password. The switches I'm using are available in the man page. Here's the highlight of what I've decided to use for my monitoring queue. I'm going to use the dash U for username colon password, which is joe.joe. That's what I've set up in my Apex repository. And then follow that up with a couple other keys for display purposes so that I can then pipe the output to a grep command and pull out just the lines I want. I'm after the HTTP header and my individual single line of JSON to monitor that while the REST service is being watched. So here you can see my script piping the input into the grep, and then I can actually pull out my test values that I'm after. Go ahead and run this. We'll run the script and confirm that we actually get a good grep out, and then we're going to run that through the watch command, showing that we'll get a recurring monitor. Let's shrink this window up and put it over here in the corner so that we can reference it and continue on with our testing. Let's switch back over to Apex now, and we will select our required privilege called MyRestPriv1, and we will apply those changes. Now that we've applied those changes, what you'll see over on the right-hand side is that every two seconds our monitor updates, and it shows 200. So that's great. Every, our security seems to be working, but it's hard sometimes to test without seeing does it actually fail. So let's go back out to our privilege and let's make a modification to our REST privilege. Let's take the group membership and change it. Not a member of group one, but now a group a member of this RESTful services group and hit apply. What will happen is with our next return, you'll see it now becomes 401 unauthorized because our user Joe is not a member of that group. What we can do is go back into the privilege, make another modification. If you use your navigational controls, you can select more than one group in the privilege. And when we do this and apply the changes, you'll see that you can have multiple groups be part of a privilege and return back a positive 200 response. We can also switch it back just to the single because the user our monitor is using has that group membership it will continually work. Now, what if we go in and modify the user? What if we take Joe out of that user group and hit apply changes here? What you'll notice is that it will go again unauthorized because Joe is not a member of the appropriate group. We made him a member of REST services. Put back group one, hit apply, our monitor comes back up with the 200. This is what we're expecting. Joe has to be a member of the same group in which the privilege is set for. If we change Joe's password and his password becomes invalid for whatever reason, you'll notice that it also becomes unauthorized. So it's also supporting that whole, is the user able to authenticate with the username and password that we've set up? So we're going to set Joe's password back to our expected value, and we should see our monitor test switch back to a 200 response. And there we go. What we have seen is how basic auth works with an Apex REST repository. To show how basic authentication works with an ORIGE repository, we will use the apex.oracle.com service publicly available. At the time of recording, this is also running the latest 19.1 and ORIGE 18.4. To save some time, let's review. I've set up the same user, Joe, and group assignment as we had in our previous example on apex.oracle.com. I've also updated my script to use the new URL. What you'll see here if you go to the SQL Workshop tab now is that there's an ORGE REST based service and you'll see a tree structure as opposed to the listing structure. And the keynote here is that our role doesn't exist. So my current monitor is running against the same 
REST Module 1, but there is no role that the Joe is a member of, even though it's listed as group membership in the User Groups tab. This is now a separate value that was created when a migration happened from the Apex-based repository to the ORDS metadata repository. These values were created one time and are not synced after that. Let's go ahead and create our new role. Our role in this case is going to be the same as the group name. So we're going to name it exactly the same. Syntax or case is also important here. We'll go ahead next and we'll create our privilege. And our privilege is going to combine the role and the service. So we'll click Create Privilege. We'll name it the same as we did in our previous example when we were using the Apex repository. It doesn't have to be named the same. We're using this for consistency. The role is the only thing that really has to flow from your user groups. We'll add in the user group, or in this case, the role name that will match our user group. And then we'll secure the protected module or modules as many as we'd like. We'll click Create Privilege, and our monitor script picks up the new change. Let's run a similar test we did in the first one. Let's go ahead and take out our group and add in the RESTful Services group. Our monitor will pick up now a 401 authorization because our user is not a member of that group, which translate to that role, so therefore is unauthorized. What you can do is add multiple roles to the same privilege. In this case, we'll add back in our REST user group one, aka role, and you'll see with multiple roles assigned it also picks up as a success. Let's see what would happen if we change the group name for some reason. So these are separate values. The group name, let's go ahead and take a look at our user group one. Let's change it to group 12. Go back to our REST service and notice that when we take a look at the privilege, it is still the same as it was before. The privilege still has the role one or group one as the role. So let's go into the user role. Let's change it to match syntactically what the group name is. Hit apply, and you'll see it switches back over to a positive response for the test. For those of you who have Oracle Cloud accounts and are using database cloud schema service or Oracle's database Exadata Express cloud service, they can also have Apex REST services that are secured with basic authentication. I'll be covering this in another video. I hope you found this video helpful. Please leave a comment below or you can reach me on Twitter. Thank you.